On this occasion, it would be proper to remember Srimati Sharada Krishnaya, the beloved wife of Justice Krishnaya, who was there as a strong support for him till her demise in the year 1974. It's a great loss which makes Justice Krishnaya teary-eyed even after the lapse of nearly four decades. Justice Krishnaya was a successful advocate, a politician, a minister of the first ministry of Kerala, a judge of the High Court of Kerala, and then the Supreme Court of India, and above all, a social activist who served the society with compassion. He still keeps himself active to the extent his body permits him due to the various ailments related to old age. One has to wonder the multifaceted personality of Justice Krishnaya. At one place you think such a classic person at that height. And at the same time you see in the next judgment he comes down to common person's understanding and you wonder how such a person from a high class could understand the life of ordinary people. That's how the Rattler municipality case, uh, how a public interest litigation could be entertained even by a magistrate. That's how he dealt with the subject. Of course, you all know the famous judgment, Article 21 in Manika Gandhi's case, and that, that how he dealt with those matters. What wonders me is, judges are very active, alert and uh, Hard, I mean, all the time working when they are in service. But you see Justice Krishna work putting in double effort after retirement. This is the greatness of justice. We are Krishna here. Yeah. And what all he thought he could do to the society till date he continues to do. There is no subject on which he cannot talk. Nothing on this earth can leave his thinking or analyzing or thinking about it again and again and coming out with some novel idea about it. Take it a cancer institute, take another social problem, take it about a child uh, rights matter. All his judgments depict one or the other rights, public rights, child rights, women rights, fundamental rights, social rights, economic rights, different kinds of rights available on earth. The topic which I have chosen today is social justice in the age of globalization. The reason why I thought I should choose this topic is because Justice Krishna represents really the conscience of social justice. And there is, as it were, this tension between globalization, the global world, and the demands of social justice. What is globalization all about? Globalization in conventional senses is all about economic growth, about GDP, not about gross domestic happiness, but about gross domestic product, about rates of growth. Global business has been built around the twin pillars of global finance, banking, capital and project finance, and cross-border trade, including mergers and acquisitions, joint ventures and international arbitration. Much of global finance is non-jurisdictional. It's not confined to India, it's not confined to the US, it's not confined to Singapore. Transactions follow a pattern and structure independent of the law in which they are written. So a transaction in India is independent of Indian law. It transcends Indian law. That's why I believe when I decided Vodafone, of course I was overruled by the Supreme Court in a Vodafone, but I believe that this was really a multinational cocking a snook at Indian law. 
The client has a choice of law to achieve the same business outcome. The global transnational lawyer today has emerged with little cultural loyalty. Global lawyers and firms adapt to a business environment which suits their needs. Technology is driving change and is liberating our learning process. This has profound implications both at the national level and the international level. Internationally, there is an integration taking place across the world of practice areas, sharing of know-how systems. Nationally, there is a breakdown of knowledge-based monopolies and the feudal equations on which they were based. To be a judge is a great opportunity to give people the fulfillment of the Constitution. What does the Constitution say? That you give justice, social, economic and political. The first right is the right to life. How do you give the right to life? Only by social justice. There, there is so much of poverty in the, in the country. 400 million people in this country, in the world, are below the poverty line. And to serve them is great social justice. And I did all that I could to the extent to which I could serve. I serve the poor people. My judgments are available for public, for public study. They have been published also. And read them. And you will understand that my commitment is only one. That is social justice to the DD and the, those who below the poverty line. Not the rich people but the poor people, they are hungry for justice and I gave them justice to the extent to which I could. I am therefore thankful, I am very thankful to the common people that they gave me an opportunity to serve them. There is, in my view, justice, not merely material justice, but there is a spiritual dimension to justice, a spiritual dimension to justice. And that spiritual dimension is serve the poor out of from your heart. What matters is not your head, but your heart. And I, all that I did was, all that I could do from my heart to when I see the poor people, my favorite tear from where they are. That is what Mahatma Gandhi told us. And, and therefore, I serve the people to wipe every such tears as I could in my humble position as a judge, as, a judge, as an advocate at the bar, as a member of the executive, as a legislator and as a judge, I have been doing all my commitments are for the common people, humanity, humanity and humanity, divinity, humanity and divinity together. That is my obligation to life. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Look not at the law with cynicism and being sarcastic. Law is dynamic and the laws and judiciary would meet to check the negative impacts of globalization with the base instinct being to eradicate inequality and empowerment of the poor, the right to life being paramount.